Right, hello, I'm Craig Tobin. I'm the uh, Macmillan Engagement Coordinator for the Macmillan at Glasgow Libraries Programme. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, a few of the Macmillan programmes in Glasgow and how we've approached social media and how it's been essential in our uh, promotions and marketing campaigns as well. Uh, my responsibility is uh, the primary care engagement, uh, linking with the NHS, GPs, pharmacies, but also overseeing the social media development uh, and the app development as well. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a bit of background into the cancer sort of landscape in Glasgow. There's two million people living with cancer and this figure is due to double by 2030. Uh, so you can see that there's an essential need for information and emotional support all across the city. Uh, Glasgow has a higher incidence of cancer than anywhere else in the UK. That's why Macmillan choose to do all of their pilots up here. Um, and that's why we've got L eight Macmillan pilots at the minute up here. So we're trying to link them all together. Uh, you'll all be familiar with this site. This is the Macmillan Nurse, uh, very trusted. We hear a lot of stories when we're out about um, how amazing the support was from the Macmillan nurses. What they're not so familiar with is the information and support model that we've created and started in Glasgow, and it's been rolled out across the UK at the minute. Can you see there? <laughs> okay, so Macmillan at Glasgow Libraries, this is where I'm based, my role citywide. Um, we are rolling out a network of emotional support and information services across uh, Glasgow libraries and um, that's 33 libraries and two leisure centres. What we really wanted was to create a safe space in the library so Macmillan gave Glasgow Life £2.1 million pounds, um, to create these comfortable environments, uh, taking it from the clinical setting into non-clinical settings. Um, previously people were traveling, ma traveling maybe from the south to the beach and just to talk to someone uh, and Macmillan said that's not that's not on. People need that in the communities. So libraries with the perfect space, uh, they offer information provision at the minute, so it's only a sidestep of what they're already offering. So in 2009, there was a pilot in the east. Uh, the east of Glasgow, incidentally, has a higher incidence of cancer than anywhere else in Glasgow. It's linked to deprivation, lifestyle choices as well. Um, and that was a pilot with the NHS. Um, just like I said, they created a safe space in the library. Um, think of Costa Coffee, but the coffee's a bit worse. Well, it's not as good. <laughs> uh, we got cushions donated from John Lewis. It was very nice. Um, and it was really, really successful. It had a lot of people attend. And I think it surprised even Macmillan. Uh, so then they rolled that out. They put it out to tender and Gla Glasgow Life came forward and said, we'd really like that. Um, so then they became the host. And I'll talk a little bit about host and sort of social media uh, when, when we're further down the line. Um, so yeah, this is it's been a really successful model. Edinburgh are rolling it out this year. They're being very competitive about it, which is really annoying me. Um, I didn't realise there was so such competitiveness between the two two places. Um, so yeah, it's been really successful. And Manchester uh, uh, soon to follow as well. So we're really pleased about it. It's been our baby along the way. <clears throat> it's the first time in the UK that we've had volunteer-led services, and I think this is where. Um, and my role comes in and where social media has come in in terms of linking um, sort of health professionals. Previously, it's always been clinical. There's never been a volunteer-led uh, service. So we've really had to build trust with those um, healthcare professionals. Um, and we're still doing it now. It's not something that's happened overnight. We've really, really had to badger at that. Um, we've got, uh, I think it's 18 drop-in services and the rest are information points. So where there's one in close proximity to a drop-in service, um, we've just opened an information point. We can help with um, benefits. Probably the main sort of reason why people come to see us is the benefits and financial advice. Complementary th therapies and counselling happens in the library itself. They don't have to travel for that either. Cancer Support Scotland provide that. Um, and it is just about putting all that provision in people's local communities so they're not travelling. Um, this is a part of our, these are all our partners, we work really closely with them all. We're not precious about the work that we do, and we can't be. We're really trying to ensure that no one in Glasgow faces cancer alone, and just to show that this approach is much, much better than trying to be precious about people's work. Uh, so we have a partnership forum that these all attend. There's much more than that, but that's the, they're the only ones I can fit on. I'm not lying to you. Uh, as I mentioned, eight Macmillan programmes um, offering a network of support. We have practical support volunteering which means people go into the homes uh, and give people a bit of respite should someone just need to nip out while and our volunteers sit with someone. We have financial um, uh, move more, there's wig banks and clothes banks, I'm not going to go into them all. Um, but what's brilliant about our social media is that Macmillan see the Macmillan at Glasgow Libraries programme as a hub. 
So we've created structures and policies where all those programs can feed into our social media accounts. It is about getting the balance right, um, so we're not just an information sharing platform, um, but we do have a huge resource of content, which is great for us. We're not, we're not sat there thinking on a daily basis what we're going to post about today. So a few of the techniques we've used and how we've got the social media, because we've only been going on social media for about two and a half years, it's really well established now, and it's nice that Macmillan have acknowledged that, and they send people up to see us from all across the UK to talk about how we've done it. Well, those fonts didn't work, did they? Look at that, that looks boring as hell. <laughs> 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 right. So before we set out doing social media, we well it was me at the time, we, I sat down and thought about a strategy, how are we going to approach this? There's so many different feeds coming in, we've got Glasgow Life wanting us to promote Glasgow Life, we've got the Nine Macmillan programmes wanting to promote Nine Macmillan programmes, um, and we've also got the link into to other programmes like the partnerships and everything that we've got. So we needed to understand who's the key player, so before we did anything we looked online, we looked to see who had the most followers, we looked who had the most power online, who was very influential. Um, and we went out and had conversations with them, face-to-face -face meetings, letting them know what we were about to do. Um, and building some anticipation, actually. <laughs> it was kind of like, God, I hope when it comes around, they're not really let down with this. But, um, yeah, having face-to-face -face contact with them really did help us. Um, storytelling is a massive part of the work that Macmillan Cancer Support do, and especially in our work as well. Um, it's a way of engagement. It's the only thing I think that's, that people emotionally connect with. Um, so luckily for us, we have volunteer case studies where, uh, and the one coming up actually is, we've got 20,000 volunteer hours now sort of r racked up um, from selfless volunteers, which is amazing, offering their information and support in the libraries. Um, so we're working with the marketing and comms teams about that um, and just getting that message out there, creating a social media plan. Um, we've got the service users, so we've got a beginning, a middle, middle and an end. Um, and it's something that the people really get involved with uh, on our platforms. Um, people love a story and it's still the best way of marketing for us. So we can tell someone walking into a service what the situation was, how we helped and the end result. Uh, it's not always positive, but then that's the nature of our work. Um, linking with partners, as I mentioned, all of them feeding into our work. Uh, the different platforms that we started with was Facebook and Twitter. Um, we use them in very different ways, and I'm sure you all know. Uh, we, the audiences are very different. Facebook is more uh, celebrating stories, celebrating milestones. Um, and we also have to, part of the, our strategy is to, to share health-related news, which changes constantly. Um, the cancer landscape is always changing. There's new medicines, there's new this, there's new that. And we, we like to try and keep up to date with that. Um, and Facebook's where we use it, and we do put that on Twitter as well. Uh, Twitter we started um, and it was more targeted. We initially started our Twitter, we do, we're not going to lie, in third sector it does become part of your role. It's not as if we've got the luxury of having a full-time social media person. So everything that we do, we have to make sure it's we're not, wait, we're not using all of our time on that. So we need to look at processes to reduce staff time and things like that. Um, but Twitter was very much used as a targeting tool. We found that when we were messaging people, it was usually people that had a little bit of influence, so we're cutting out the middleman with Twitter, so we would tweet them saying, uh, a good example is one of the pharmacies in the West End, can we come out, can we have a meeting with you, can we talk about how we might be able to work better together, and that was really, really successful, and now they're one of our sort of partners, they've constantly, they've now got a slack wall with all our Macmillan information, um, and they've got the link with the information and support officer as well, so that's, there's, that, there's that contact there, so they feel really involved. Um, when I'm talked about saving time, uh, the template's really, really crucial. It is part of, I, I manage the team that manage the social media, so I'm a little bit removed. Um, but the templates do really, really come in handy. Um, these come from Macmillan mostly, um, and it's just about ways where we try and structure the week. So on a certain day, we would have a post on a Friday, just talking about all the engagement work that we've done. Um, so in one week, what have we achieved? That's not just for us, that's for volunteers, because sometimes uh, the volunteers are sat there thinking, what are the staff actually doing to promote these services? We're still in our infancy, we're still really, really new. Um, so some of the services are quiet, so it's a great way for us to share that. Um, moving on. LinkedIn is quite a new thing. Um, but it's been essential in the work that I've done. When I mentioned earlier about on Twitter, we were targeting people um, of, of influence who could make the decisions, who could meet with us and, and, and start something special. That was brilliant. But LinkedIn seems to have take, taken it to the next step. I wasn't allowed to start one for Macmillan at Glasgow Library, so I just went ahead and did one for my personal. 
Um, and that brings me back to sort of hosts and Macmillan expectations. So we are managed by Glasgow Life and funded by Macmillan Cancer Support, which is a very strange setup. Um, both have very different views on social media. So I'm just, one of the sort of, not struggles, but one of the most difficult things was to try and balance that out. Um, Glasgow Life is very corporate. Um, sometimes quite dry, um, a bit of a lack of personality. Whereas Macmillan, Macmillan are really, really keen to share those stories, to create personality, to really get your viewership up, really get that engagement going, treat it as conversations as opposed to just information posting, information posting constantly, which no one's going to engage with. So it's getting that balance right. Um, where was that? LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, so what we can do with LinkedIn is put in NHS, you can go to a department. So for us, oncology, brilliant. We can look down the list of the people that work for NHS in oncology and we can send them a message. Um, now you'd think no one will get back in touch with us, but actually, the and I think because I'm linked to Macmillan on, on my page, uh, it's a trusted brand. And I think that's one of the reasons why people have messaged back. We've got in touch, we've created some great meetings that we set up some training for staff across the city and to be able to increase our referral pathways through health professionals, which is absolutely needed for sustaining our sustaining the programme. Um, and a good example was the good morning service. I'm not sure how many people have heard of that, but they call out to um, people over 60 who are isolated and alone. Um, and they got in touch saying that they've received calls saying that people that they're dealing with have had uh, they're affected by cancer in some way, maybe a family member or a friend, and they're not sure what to do. Um, so we're going out and training all the staff on how to refer to our service. Uh, and that all came about from LinkedIn, so that's been an absolute amazing tool for us. Uh, again, saving time, apps and visuals. Um, and this is, I was going to pose this question to people here. One of the things that we like to do is, is, is rather, if we're, we're posting about a service, because we do have 33 services and, and two in leisure centres, so that's very fine. Um, what we like to do is put that information in the picture and have something maybe quirky or funny in the actual content of the, of the post. But what we're struggling with, and Macmillan is struggling with this as well, it's not just us, is getting the font onto the actual image. So if anyone has any apps or any ideas on how to do that quickly, please let me know. Um, other things that we've done to try and keep audiences engaged is the question and answer sessions. We're in a lucky position. We have the Macmillan nurses. We have NHS Inform. So from time to time, Macmillan say to us, do you want to host a question and answer session on this type of cancer? We're going to send you this nurse. And they do send them over. And it's just for an hour. And people can post questions. It might not be a nurse. It might be a benefits advisor. Um, but they come over and they sit with the social media and they, and they answer the questions there. So it's just a way of keep changing up the, what we're posting now. Um, our partnership, when I said we're not uh, precious about the work that we do, our partnership forum is really, really big. We've got about uh, 40 different organisations on there from Prostate Cancer UK, Breast Cancer Care, uh, Roy Castle Lung Foundation, all coming together to share best practice. Um, and it's, it's really, really good. And that happens, uh, I think it's once a quarter. Um, but if they can't attend what we do, and I'm sure you're all aware of it, we, we stream it over Periscope uh, so people can view it even if they're not there. Uh, and it's been really successful for us. We've had a lot of great feedback about it. Um, and when I mention sustainability, all of this work, all of the work that we're doing um, has to be sustainable. So at the end of our programme, the Macmillan funding is pulled, so the staff members are pulled out and libraries will be continuing this. That's the plan. <laughs> um, libraries are going to continue this work. So what we need to, everything that we're doing, we need to keep in mind that this needs to be a sustainable model, even with social media. So everything that we created in terms of personality and things like that, we really, really don't want to lose. Um, so I'm sort of meeting with the, the comms and marketing team about that, trying to create lists because um, we're all over the city. It's a city-wide programme. We've created lists for each uh, area, northeast, northwest, and south, um, just for a way to make it sort of foolproof as opposed to these are the key organisations that need to be sustained for the future. Um, so that's the continuing work now. We've got 18 months left to hand this over. It's quite scary. Uh, anyone got any good examples of uh, that kind of thing, please come and talk to me because it would be great <laughs> to know. Uh, and that's everything, really from our social media. We're not experts, and like I say, it does just get added to people's jobs, um, but we are passionate about it, and we've got the great resource of having Macmillan and Glasgow Life there to sort of give us pointers and sort of move us forward with what we're doing. All right, got it. Thanks, man.